Hey friends, welcome back. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk a little bit more about body fat in context and talk about metabolically healthy obesity between metabolically unhealthy obesity and even individuals who are of normal weight but fat or obese on the inside. I think this is really important because you know, I don't wanna vilify anyone who's a little bit overweight yet is physically fit and therefore at lower risk of all the different diseases that are associated with obesity. So let's address that category first, okay? So this is gonna be metabolically healthy, so we're gonna use an acronym, metabolically healthy obesity, okay? Now what is the prevalence of this amongst all of the people that are obese? Depending upon the study that you look at, this is about 25% of individuals, okay? So we're gonna talk about 25%. So if you go to the doctor and your doctor says, hey Sally, I know you exercise, I know you eat pretty good foods, but you're overweight, you're obese, you are so unhealthy, you're at it. and you, you're saying to yourself, well gosh, I exercise, I garden, I eat real food. Well, it turns out that there is context to where your body fat is distributed in the metabolic health that will determine or differentiate your risk for contracting obesity-associated diseases, like heart disease, like diabetes, like cancer, like Alzheimer's and dementia, okay? So about 25% of people who are so-called bigger boned or a little bit heavier, because of the fact that you're probably physically active, you have a physically active job, you exercise, you're gardening, um, you're in this category of metabolically healthy. Now, here's what's interesting, that same sort of Pareto's principle, if we think about lean, sort of so-called skinny people, about 25% of skinny people are uh, thin on the outside, but fat on the inside, TOFI. So depending upon the study that you look at here, um, this is percentage, about, honestly, about one in four so-called normal weight people have greater metabolic risk than some of the metabolic, uh, some of the obese individuals. Why is that? It's because, again, the body fat in context, where the fat is stored. Where you do not want fat is around the abdomen and around your organs. We've talked about the importance of liver health and muscle health, okay? So if you're thin on the outside, but you're metabolically unhealthy, the fat is getting stored on the inside, around the viscera, around the mental region, around the organs, in the organs. This is problematic. And so we need to make sure that, you know, just because you go to the doctor, you hop on a scale and the doctor says, oh my gosh, Sally, you're only 99 pounds. You are so healthy but on the inside, all of that fat is distributed around here. That is not healthy, my friends. So again, we don't wanna just vilify people for being a little bit overweight because you can be fit and fat and metabolically healthy. Now, the highest risk here, and these are individuals that are at increased risk for severe COVID-19, for Alzheimer's disease, for dementia, for heart disease in particular, for diabetes, all of the metabolic syndrome linked diseases, these are the metabolically unhealthy obese, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. But first, friends, thank you for tuning into this video. If you found this helpful, please hit that like button. Be sure to leave a comment below, and also share this video with a friend, because we're gonna talk a little bit more about exercise and practical tips very soon for individuals who are obese and metabolically healthy and obese. We're gonna talk more about that. Also, I'll link solutions below. One thing that can be very helpful for you, if you exercise, if you intermittent fast, if you do health-promoting activities like go in the sauna or go in the hot tub to stimulate your cardiovascular system, you might wanna check out our sister company, Myoscience. We have just reformulated the electrolyte stick to contain redmin real salt. You have creatine, you have albion chelated minerals. It is one of the only electrolyte formulas out there that also pairs creatine and electrolytes together. So use the coupon code podcast at checkout. You can use this when you exercise, when you intermittent fast, or after you sweat and go in the sauna. So definitely check that out and I'll put links below. But let's talk about the highest risk category and the worst type of fat distribution. This is the, the metabolically unhealthy obesity, so unhealthy obesity, okay? So this is about 75% of obese individuals fall into this category. Now let me just tell you, you really don't wanna be in this bucket, thin on the outside, fat on the inside, or this bucket. If anything, I would take metabolically healthy obese over any of these two, because again, the risk factors are much lower for developing heart disease, cardiovascular related complications, strokes, and so forth. Now, this is where, and especially in kids and in younger people, this is, I think, one of the most important aspects of this video is the age, okay? Because it turns out 
that age really matters when it comes to obesity. So younger people, obesity is much more likely to become a problem in terms of the metabolic health challenges. But over the age of 60, fat, and I'm not trying to endorse you or promote gaining fat, but body fat can be actually quite protective. And so there's a U-shaped curve, which is quite interesting. Anyhow, these individuals, okay, let's just talk about the, the complications here. Because of excessive amounts of fat, what happens is immune cells can become infiltrated within the fat tissue. That can cause necrotic fat cells. That can cause all sorts of inflammatory cytokines. Elevated leptin, reduced adiponectin, a bad combination. We have low-grade chronic inflammation. We have increased blood sugar levels. We have compressive factors on the heart and, and just mechanical issues associated with breathing. We saw this with COVID and the, the links with the disproportionate levels of obese individuals who required mechanical ventilation, all of these things. So, but it's not all obese individuals. Now you might say, well, what's differentiating outside of age, which we're gonna get to right here, but what's differentiating? Why are 25% of these obese individuals metabolically healthy? Probably because of physical activity. I know I say this over and over and it irritates you people who love fasting. I love fasting too. It irritates people who love a low carb diet. They're like, why are you promoting exercise, Mike? Because exercise primes your skeletal muscle and can help to redistribute where your fat is stored, okay? So it's really important wherever you are on the spectrum. If you're thin but skinny fat, you need to lift weights and embark on a resistance training program. Because the reason why you're storing fat around the midsection is because you don't have skeletal muscle to help burn some of that fat, which is inducing the insulin resistance that is causing the fat to be stored here. So at the end of the day, the solution here, my friends, is better food, lower glycemic index food, and physical activity. Okay, yes, you can compress your fitting window and fast as well. So that's where we wanna go. But let's finish up on this U-shaped curve with obesity being linked with, you know, the differential factors here between, I'm just gonna put young and old here. The obesity is not such a problem for individuals over the age of 60 in terms of its links with um, various chronic health issues from, again, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, dementia, things like that. But individuals under the age of 60, like if you've been obese your entire life, okay, until the point of 60 and you've made it past 60, I'm not saying you shouldn't try to lose the weight, okay? But the fact that you've been carrying that weight actually has effects on, you probably have a more lean mass, you have stronger bones, okay? So I'm not endorsing obesity. But the issue here is with the younger people, obviously there's challenges with the obesity because it induces diabetes and the inflammatory uh, sequela that is linked with diseases. So just want you to understand that there is this sort of, um, this bifurcation around the age of 60. And if you talk to cardiologists or people who do stents or things like that, they'll tell you like some of the sickest patients they work on with the worst coronary artery disease are the thin on the outside but fat on the inside patients. These are the skinny fat individuals. Their arteries are a complete train wreck. But sometimes the 65 year old who has some chest pain they, and these uh, you know, interventional cardiologists will go in there to stent these people the arteries have no evidence of atherosclerosis. So there's this so-called obesity paradox, and it turns out that the older individuals, you know, again, I'm not saying gain weight, I'm not saying get fat, but don't beat yourself up, don't be too hard on yourself mentally if you, you know, are a little bit overweight and you're over the age of 60, as long as you strive to become more metabolically healthy by way of intermittent fasting, low-carb diet, and exercise, okay? so. The challenge here, of course, is in the young people. If they become overweight or obese as adolescents or teenagers, they're more likely to carry that weight throughout their life, and that has its own consequences, which we don't want, okay? So fat in context, it really matters where your fat's distributed and how metabolically healthy you are. So we wanna focus here on metabolic health. Obviously, that's you know the differentiating factor uh, that is protecting the overweight and the obese is physical activity. And just because you're lean, it doesn't mean you're healthy on the inside. So what do you think about that? I will link some of the studies that I use to reference to create this video and to better understand uh, where the fat is distributed and how that impacts your overall metabolic health and health trajectory. So um, you'll find those links helpful if you decide to click the link below. And let me know what you think in the comments and I will catch you in a future video down the road. Thanks for tuning in, bye now.